Yeah, hello everyone, and today it's my honor to present our paper named Large Scale Personalized Video Game Recommendation via Social Wear Contest Rise Graph Neural Network and via researchers from the University of Illinois at Chicago. And first, first, actually, today we have too much games to play. It's not about, about 10 years ago. But, uh, 10 years ago, in about the year 2010, there are about only 200 games released on the Steam data platform. But in the year of 220, there are more than 10,000 games are released on the Steam platform. Usually, each game requires at least a playing time of at least 15 hours. So actually, even we play games day and night, we could not, we could not play all the games. So here comes the recommender system, and it aims to help users find the games of interest. And the input of the recommender system will be the user as well as the, a collection of games such as Dota, Elder Ring, Hollow Knight, and the God of War. And the output will be the user's interested game, for example, as this case, maybe the Elder Ring. And uh, here, let, let us see what, we, what data we can collect in the game recommendation. And actually, it can be separated into two parts. The first part is game-related. Game, the first part is game-related data. It, it includes the game's developer, the game's publisher, and the game's genre. And the second part is uh, player-related, such as the player's purchase interaction and the player's dwelling time in each game, as well as the player's social friends in the in the game platform. And actually, we identify, we identify three challenges in game recommendation. The first one is personalization, because we could not directly recommend the same set of items to different users, because if the preference of different users is actually different. And the, the second one is game contextualization, uh, which means both games have different kinds of contacts, such as their feature contacts and their player's information contacts. And how to utilize this context information is another, is another challenge. And the third challenge is the social connection because user social connection share the same preference. And this is a very critical signal for us to consider to get a better performance. And here we have some uh, data analysis on the platform data. And for the personalization, we can see here are two, two figures. The first figure shows the number of engaged games of each user. We can see the distribution actually follows the whole raw distribution, which means most of users only play a very limited number of games. It also means that a precise a accuracy recommendation is very important for them because they only play a very limited number of games and we, we, should, we should recommend them accurately. And the second feature shows users to running time in the game. And we can see the distribution of the running time is more like a normal distribution. It's not like a long tail distribution, which means Users' dwelling time in the platform is not directly related to the number of games. Even, even players can play a very limited number of games. The dwelling time in the game is be very large. And uh, here we show some analysis on the game contextualization. Refer to the game contextualization, we, can, we have two kinds of contexts. The first one is game feature context. In this feature, we show the game genre distribution of game runners. For example, in this, in this box, the 0 0.733 means there are about more than 70% of users that play action game also play RPG games. And we can see the distribution is not evenly, which means uh, for different kinds of genres will influence, will influence players' behavior. And the second part comes from the player's behavior context. And here we show, we show, we show a figure of the user's purchase information. With a bluer, with a bluer square, which means the game, the two games are usually co-purchased by some users. For example, this blue square indicates users that play Control Strike also have a much higher probability to play Counter Strike Condition Zero. So, from the user's player behavior, we can also get the game context. And the third part is the social connection. And the social connection comes with uh, two assumptions. The first assumption is mutually assumption, which means people tend to be connected if they are more similar to each other. And the second assumption is social influence character, which means the people will influence these connections from his or her own preference. And we have an illustration from our data. We calculate the person correlation coefficients with respect to runners and with respect to games. And from the uh, from the runners, we can see we 
we compute the Pearson correlation coefficients between player and their friends and between player and random users. We can see the score of player and friends is much larger than the player random, which means uh, with respect to the game runners, there, it, it has a higher probability that users player will play the same runner, the same type of games as a player. And from the in-game, from, from, from players, in-game behavior, we can also see the behavior. The similarity of the user between user and their friends is much larger than the user of random. So it indicates if we can make use of the social connection, we can have a better performance. And, uh, and the problem comes here is uh, how can we combine all the information together? And uh, we propose to represent all the information as a graph. And the graph generally is like uh, this picture and from where the, the triangle indicates the game and the circle indicates the user. And this graph can be split into three subgraphs. First subgraph is a game, it's named game contest graph, where we have a subgraph of games and uh, the connection between games indicates the two games share some kind of context. For example, the blue line may, may indicate the two the game four and game five come from the same developer. And the green line may indicate the user four uh, game four and game three are already co-produced together. So different kinds of context can be encoded by different types of edges in the game context graph. And the second the second part of the graph is the game engagement graph, which indicates the users and their interaction each games. Also, the interaction does not only consider the purchase information, but also has the dwelling time. And the last part is the social graph. A social graph indicates users and, uh, and his uh, relations with respect to different social friends. And, uh, and the first way we need to calculate a uh, game embedding. The game embedding is calculated from the game context graph. And from the game content graph, we will go through several graph convolution layers and each graph convolution layer will correspond to one type of edge. And then we will pull all the results together to obtain, to obtain each game's embedding. And here is the framework of our proposed SCGREC. And uh, this model consists of uh, actually three parts. The first part aims to calculate users' context embedding. And, uh, it is, uh, and it is obtained by a time-aware aggregation model. And the input of this model will be our game engagement graph. And the second part will be, will be user's social embedding, which is calculated from the context attention model. And the context attention model uh, is used to the social graph. And the last part is user's personalized embedding. And uh, after we obtain the final embedding, we compute the dot product with the item embedding or the game embedding to obtain the rating score and we use BPR loss to optimize our model. And first let, let's, let, let's see what is time aware context aggregation. And from the game engagement graph we have the user and the item interaction and their dwelling time. And a longer a longer dwelling time may indicates users are more interested in that game. So here for each item we have the game embedding and the after a time aware aggregation we, we obtain the we obtain the aggregated function and uh, and after uh, concatenation and the linear transformation we obtain users context embedding and when we calculate the dwelling time we do not directly calculate user time but we use the percentile of the time because the playing time of different games range very differently and the second model is our context attention this model aims to aims to learn the attention weight between users and his different neighbors and intuitively, we want, we want the neighbors that share the same context embedding with the control user, they will have a larger weight. So, so here, so we compute the attention weight based on, the, based on each user's context embedding and use the weight as the aggregate, with the aggregation weight to aggregate each social neighbor's uh, personalized embedding. And here is our overall comparison. We compare our model with the most state of the art methods, including uh, including personalized methods and non-personalized methods. And we can see our SCG REC always performs the best and it has a very good performance. It's over, it's in most of the cases, it's over 5% improvement. And then we perform an analysis study and model A is the 
built by removing the social embedding, and model B is built by removing the context embedding, and the model C is built by removing all the two embeddings together. And you can see whether we remove each kind of embedding, we will have a drop on the performance, which means each model in our model has a play a part. And then we show the user's social and context influence, which means when we gradually increase the weight of social embedding or increase the weight of context embedding, what's going to happen? We can see when we gradually increase the weight of social embedding, and our model will have a slightly improve, improvements and then drops. Because in, the, in this case, it, it means user social neighbors are very noisy, and we could not assign too much weight on the social neighbors to decide on the player's interests. And then when we gradually add more context weight, and we can see the performance gradually becomes better and better, which means with, uh, with more context information, our, uh, our model can have a more precise pref uh, prediction on, on the users. Yeah, and that's our work. And uh, if you have any questions, you can directly ask. Great, thank you. Um, so again, um, you can put your questions in the chat, or you could uh, raise your hand and ask your question. I see. I see a. I see a question. Okay, I see a question of uh, from Chuang, which means uh, is there a difference between game recommendation and the general recommendation? Yeah, actually there is difference because uh, the most the one most difference is that in game in game recommendation we have users behavior in games. And but in general recommendation case, we only have user item interactions. And using user behavior in the game, such as their dwelling time, and it, it, it will it will readily provide us more information. And in our work, we actually only use users dwelling time because we do not have access to other kind of users in game behavior. But if we can, if we have more behavior, more user behavior, such as uh, how many, such as uh, how many time or or how many, or how many, or how many, or how many friends he played in that game? That will be a, that will be a more advantageous. 